Yes, it's been four years. So it's been four years since I've been on keto. And it's kind of a long time. So I started off in the beginning of 2017. I think it was probably March or April time. So it's going to be four years in a month or so. And I have to say I'm slightly surprised that I'm still on keto simply because I was never able to stick to any kind of diet in the past. Well, other than being vegan, um, it's a slightly different type of exercise. But as far as weight management and to improve health, I was never able to stick with anything. But at the same time, I'm not surprised because I know how normal it feels being on keto. So I made a video on the first year mark and also the second year um, to provide updates and my progress. And last year, the third year, for whatever reason I didn't do it. So I thought it was way overdue that I give you um, an update. So I'm doing really, really well in a way that um, I almost don't notice it. I almost forget what it's like prior to keto because it just feels like a normal way of living. But obviously I'm making um, cooking videos, uh, recipe videos. So there's a part of me that's conscious about me being on keto. But other than that, you know, it's just a normal way of being. But of course, if you just started, there would be a learning curve and that lens could be different from person to person. Um, for me, it probably took a good six, seven months. I think it was at a point when I realized I was fat adapted, meaning that my body has switched fuel from glucose to uh, ketone and um, everything stabilized. And it was at that point I knew this is workable because till that point I was kind of half in, if that makes sense. I was following the principles and I was doing my best to make good selection of food. But at the same time, I think mentally I wasn't totally committed because I failed so many times. Uh, in a way, I didn't want to go in fully committed and realize that I couldn't do it. So for a pretty long period of time in the beginning, I kind of said, well, if it doesn't work, I just, you know, stop doing it. No big deal. And in fact, that's the way it should be. Um, I don't think you should beat yourself up if it doesn't work out for any reason, because it doesn't work for everybody and nothing works for everybody. But by the time I did my first year update, I knew it makes sense because I could feel the difference in my body, but also mentally as well. And I talked about this a lot. Um, about the mental freedom and it was indeed how I experienced it and it was probably m the most important part of the whole experience. You know, I was no longer thinking about food all the time and food was enjoyable because it was delicious without dire consequence. That very often happens when, you, um, when you're eating something that you feel guilty about, um, some high carbohydrate or high sugar. So it was a very different way of being. I knew at that point how significant it was. So one of the questions I've been asked probably most frequently is the fan, why are you on keto? You don't look overweight. So I have referred to my earlier videos, the channel started in 2017. Um, I wasn't on keto at that time. And people go, well, you didn't look overweight at all. Why do you feel the need to go on um, a diet? And I think that highlighted the really critical part of weight issues. I think weight issues is so nuanced and so complex. You know, I was never perceived as an overweight person. And I think in a way it made the matter uh, harder because it's not about the numbers on the scale or what you look like necessarily. It's your relationship with your body. So I was aspiring to be a dancer um, since I was quite young. And it probably started the whole thing because dance is a very body conscious form of art. I mean, you know, you're making shapes with your body and uh, you're out there completely. So as a young kid, I was in an environment that was pretty common to have some sort of, well, eating disorder, basically. Not so much in a sort of a diagnosable level, but there would be sort of a behavioral thing that's um, not normal um, for, for a young, young kid to do. And when I hit puberty, the whole thing just escalated because my body went out of control. I couldn't control my weight. And I was in dance school and returning from summer break or winter breaks, they were the hardest. 
because during the break, you let go a little bit. And when you return to the school, they weigh you, they measure you. And uh, it was traumatic. It was extremely traumatic because every time I return, I put on weight. It's always a big blow to my confidence and I feel deeply ashamed on many levels because I felt like um, everybody was managing okay, but I wasn't able to do that. What's wrong with me? So my relationship with my body kind of deteriorated and it never really recovered really until I went on keto. And the reason being that um, I feel like for the first time, I have some control to the way I eat. It sounds astounding, but I think if you're watching this channel, it probably sounds quite familiar. So hourly, I wasn't overweight, but I was battling secretly, daily basis, um, fighting with food. And it was diabolical because food is supposed to nourish you and make you happy. You know, it should be pleasurable to eat. But I was going back and forth with the guilt and pleasure, you know, doing that many times over a day. So eating occupied a lot of my thoughts and my capacity as a human being. You know, we all, have, we all know people or have friends that can eat and eat and eat and never put on an ass. Or even more puzzling, um, I have known people that go, well, I have no appetite. And I always thought, well, are you crazy? How can you not have an appetite? You know, my problem was the opposite. I could never figure out how not to overeat. It sounds totally crazy. And it wasn't until I realized that uh, it was the choice of food. Um, a lot of people can handle carbohydrate and sugar fine. Um, they have no issues. But for people like me, and probably many of you, it's a battle. But I never quite understood the root of the problems because we were taught that if, if we can control the quantities and calories and maybe reduce fat, we should be okay. But it never worked because I wasn't able to sustain that way of eating. And when I started keto back in 2018, I kind of went in half-heartedly. And as I said earlier, I didn't want to feel the sense of failure again, but I was desperate. I wanted to try it. So I kind of eased myself in. On one hand, I was doing quite a lot of research. I wanted to educate myself and understand why I'm doing this. Why would it even work for me? And uh, so I look into a lot of kind of independent experts and scientists who are not affiliated with manufacturers or having something to sell you. I mean, books are fine, but you know, anyone who's selling supplements or products, I don't trust. So I didn't go in full on. I didn't just cut everything. I didn't just cut um, carbohydrate and sugar completely right away. So I went in with no sugar, no bread, starchy food, but I was eating some rice and also some lentils. I love lentils. And I was on that for maybe a month or so. And I started to notice the difference. Even though I wasn't on low carb as such, I was cutting off a lot of food that was triggering my body to do crazy things, you know, to overeat. So I thought, well, this feels good. And it's not too traumatic, you know, to cut off um, bread, etc. I was a little bit surprised and I thought, well, why don't I go a bit further and um, maybe cut all carbohydrate and sugar. And uh, I was hoping to get into some sort of ketosis state. But even then I was telling myself that if it doesn't work out, um, just stop doing it. That's fine. But at that time it was a conscious decision not to use test strips um, for a ketone level. I wanted to go by how I felt because I knew myself. If I had to test my ketone level every day, and measure things and calculate things, I was most likely not going to stick to it. And I think that was the point that I started to rebuild my relationship with my body. I started to listen to it and not fight it. And I started to learn to trust my body. So instead of telling my body what to do, I tried to do things that would help my body to kind of regulate itself. And this is so important because if you think about, for instance, satiety signals, it's such a basic function. It's a function that your body tells you when to eat or how much you eat. But that signal is often broken. It was definitely broken with my body. I did not know when I'm full. So prior to keto, if I feel full, that meant I've overeaten. But it's not supposed to be that way. You know, feeling hungry and feeling full, these are the two most important and most basic signals um, our body is giving us. 
So one is telling you when to replenish your body with energy and the other one is telling you when to stop. So imagine if these signals are broken and I don't have to imagine because, you know, I lived it all my life and this might sound dramatic, but I didn't really understand what feeling four felt like until I was on keto. And I think that was the biggest revelation. I thought, whoa, you know, feeling four is actually a really comfortable feeling. You know, I don't feel bloated. I've, I don't feel sleepy. And I certainly don't feel guilty. And I thought, well, this is what it's supposed to feel like. You know, it's not normal to feel tired after eating food. That absolutely doesn't make sense because food is supposed to give you energy. So you're supposed to feel better afterwards, not worse. So the whole thing kind of become a lot more clear. The picture became a lot more clear. It was kind of a newfound um, joy to be able to live without being played by an activity. You have to participate every day and, um, you know, eating is supposed to give you pleasure, not giving you mental anguish. So I knew I was, you know, maybe on the right path. And throughout the whole period, I was trying to educate myself. I was doing research. You know, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just feeling good for a short period of time. And then there may be sort of health issues. So I was being quite conscious and quite and quite mindful uh, throughout the whole period. So four years on, um, first of all, my appetite is very stable. Um, with food, I can almost take it or leave it, which is something I could never say. It was just not possible. And also you've been watching my, well, I eat everyday videos. Um, I eat pretty late every day. So if I get up in the morning about seven o'clock, I probably don't eat till one o'clock or two. It's, quite normal. So I don't particularly practice intermittent fasting, but my body kind of just wanted to do that. It doesn't urge me to eat till later in the day. And I kind of like it because it's relaxing. You don't have to rush around trying to prepare food first in the morning. So my breakfast is normally um, around one or two in the afternoon, sometimes later. So that's normally my main meal of the day. So I'll cook something nice. And by the evening, I'll eat something light. So I don't practice one meal a day, but I tend to eat within um, probably six hour window. It's just how my body wants to do. So I kind of just listen to it and do what it wants. Some evenings, I'm just not hungry and I forget to eat. So I eat when I'm hungry. I don't eat when I'm not hungry. It sounds really basic. So I don't follow the clock. So that's kind of a normal day when I have, you know, full control in terms of what I eat. But in days, if there is social activities, then I'll kind of work around it. If there's a meal time, I'm not particularly hungry. I know what food to go for. I, I can choose something light and still be there, be present, um, you know, having a meal with someone. But I don't force myself to eat sort of a full meal. So you kind of learn to work around it. So I want to keep today's chat sort of reasonably high level. Um, I just wanted to give you a sort of overall um, update of my progress. I'm hoping to do more talks like this, maybe tackling uh, a certain subject. I get a lot of questions and sometimes the question is so big, I'm not able to kind of answer um, in a line or two or, or even a paragraph. So I'm hoping to pick out the, the subject matters that probably most people um, have kind of issues with or, or, or have uh, questions with and uh, be able to go in a bit further. So um, I hope today's chat is useful. In particular new, I can totally understand um, you need a lot of support. And I think a lot of people watching this channel, maybe they just um, started keto. And maybe some of you have been on keto before, but didn't work out for some reason. You know, you're trying to figure out how to make it right. So I hope the recipes and information here on this channel uh, can uh, be of some help. And ultimately for me, being on keto, as I always call it, is a biohack. So it's a tool that helps me to work with my body. Um, it's not a religion. I don't worship it. And, uh, and I'm not militant about it, as you can see with my approach. Ultimately, what I want is freedom. And the best way for me to do that is to normalize it without um, having a regime that I have to feel I have to maintain. So it's between me and my body. And I'm very mindful that it doesn't become 
and idealism. So I do not advocate anybody to go on it. You have to make that decision yourself. And the only way to find out is maybe try it and tune into your body and see if it works for you. And I have many more um, everyday recipe to share with you um, in weeks to come. So I hope to see you there. So follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.